Welcome to the Stogie Geek Show, episode 126. This episode is sponsored by H Selects, providing cigar enthusiasts with premium long filler cigars aged at least five years at an extraordinary price. Order online at CigarFrontier.com. And by Mr. J's Havana Smoke Shop, located in Rhode Island, they have an outstanding selection of premium handmade cigars. And by the Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, it's a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. And by AJ Fernandez Cigars, handcrafted in Nicaragua using the finest materials. Brands include the San Latano, Pino Lero, and AJ's recently released New World brand. Visit them on the web at AJFernandezCigars.com. And by Debonair Cigars, visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. And by Ocean State Cigars, try the Jay Grotto series, including the new Jay Grotto Anniversary Series. Visit them on the web at OceanStateCigars.com for a full list of retailers near you. Welcome everyone to this special edition of the Stogie Geek Show. Why is it special? Because it's always special because it's the Stogie Geeks. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, joined by our very special guest in studio, none other than Stogie Santa. Good He's evening. hanging out with us back from... Uh, vacation in sunny Florida, hmm. where uh, we were just laughing at your the way you vacation, I dude. The way you vacation is like a rock star, <laughs> and, uh, and we just that's all I'm gonna say. That's, that's all I'm gonna so say. So oh, it was epic. Uh, I felt like I was there. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> On the lines via Skype, Mr. Will Cooper joins us. Welcome, Will. Hey, greetings, everybody. Now, Will, you were a little under the weather. I'm glad you were able to join us this week. Uh, I'm glad yeah. to hear you're feeling better. It was kind of funny. It was right after I talked to Stogie Santa on Tuesday. I it hit me like a brick, but it I was better today. So good. I'm glad. <laughs> good. I'm glad yeah. to hear that. Uh, now we have a very special guest for this uh, episode, uh, Jason Wood, who's the vice president of Miami Cigar Company. Welcome, Jason. What's going on, everybody? Live from Miami. Yeah, very nice. Now, Jason, we got to meet in person when you were here for the blending seminar that we did with Manuel and Noah. And in honor of that, uh, I, I lit up a La Aurora uh, cigar, um, and I'm smoking from the 10-pack uh, the of cigars. Okay. These are the 10-pack of Coronas yes. that were available as part of the blending seminar. So this is the Preferito blends in the Corona size. Uh, so I, I purchased a little mixed pack of cigars of these Corona sizes. Uh, I'm smoking the Corojo, uh, which okay. is very good. A nice spice uh, so far in the first third uh, of this Corojo Preferito Corona, uh, which is uh, a very special size of the Preferitos that you uh, cannot find readily available on the market. So, Very nice. Very and nice. Actually, Glad you enjoyed it. I, yep. And uh, I actually went the other end of this uh, side of Miami, and I went with the Nesta Miranda Collection Connecticut in the short Robusto. Hmm. Very nice. Very nice. Yep. Yep. A little yep. bit of everything. And I went with the yep. Laurora La rum as well. So we got the... the <laughs> <laughs> now, interesting, Jason. I, I didn't know that La Aurora makes rum and they distribute it here in the U.S.? Not yet. We actually released a rum last year and mm -hmm. um, at the IPCPR in Vegas, we let everybody try it out for the first time. So everybody's used to at our booth, we have the Presidente beer normally. Mm -hmm. Last year, we started with the, with the rum. La Aurora rum is actually made by Barcelo. So that's the manufacturer for us on the rum. We're still working out the kinks to get the import license and everything to get it into the States. But it's, it's, available, it's available already at their store shop in Santiago, and we're working on bringing it over to the States now. Very and Jason, cool. Jason, we, we hear a lot from people. You know, we talk about cigars are difficult. It seems very difficult to get rum over into the States. The thing that's interesting about that, and I actually got a quick story, funny story for you guys. Um, for cigars, the way it works, when you have an import license for cigars, you can import, let's say I import Nesta Miranda, La Aurora, all the different brands of cigars under the same import license. With liquor, you have to have the import license specific for that actual liquor, so you can't just have a broad liquor license. So what happens at the IPCPR, I tell the guys in the factory, look, it's not so easy, we can't just bring this liquor in, you need to figure out a way to make it happen. Okay, yeah, they'll figure it out. A week before, still nothing. They didn't have anything to get the liquor in, 
they sent it to Miami Cigar. I had to deny it right away because we didn't have the import license. So Dominicans being the way they are and they're very crafty, they figured it out. One of the guys in the factory got each one of the people coming from the factory to bring two bottles of, of rum. Mm -hmm. So he had about 60 different guys and that's how we got our 120 bottles to the show so that all our <laughs> could enjoy the rum. I like that. I like that. I like that, yeah. <laughs> pretty creative. Pretty creative. I, I thought there was no chance it was going to happen, but they were able to make it happen, which is very cool. So, and, and I uh, got to sample that. It was very good. <laughs> Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, Jason, I, I guess I want to start with uh, your background in the cigar industry and how you got involved in the cigar <laughs> industry. Well, for those of you who don't know, I'm Agnesta Miranda is my father-in-law. So he's the one naturally that brought me into cigars. I've been with the company in May will be six years. Before the six years, I had nothing to do with cigars. I actually never even smoked a cigar before. So being my father-in-law, he came up to me. And he was constantly telling me, you know, this is the family business. We would love to get you involved. It's the future for you, your wife, and your kids. You should be in the business. So as time, little by little, he got me into it. And I was like, you know what? That's great. But if I want to be in this industry, I want to know everything about it, starting with going to the factory. So my first three months on the job, I lived in Santiago. So with Guillermo and Manuel and all of them at the factory, just to get a crash course, obviously three months is nothing. You're not going to learn everything, the ins and outs. But it gave me a good head start to what I needed to know. Till the day, like we just went to the factory now, and I'm always constantly learning new things. So it's, it's, I'm so glad that I made the decision to come over. Because it's such, I mean, it's a family business. We're, my in-laws are the ones that started the business 25 years ago. And it's, it's just so cool to be a part of something like that compared to my past jobs and past industries that I've worked in and stuff like that. Very cool. So, Jason, for our uh, listeners, describe the relationship between La Aurora, Miami Cigars, and then some of the other brands that, that, that kind of fall under the umbrella. I think some of our listeners might be listening and say, well, you know, I, I hear La Aurora, I hear Miami Cigars. Sometimes you might hear them used interchangeably. So, you know, describe for everyone uh, the, the relationship there. Correct. So there are a lot of people that, that aren't familiar with, the Miami, with Miami Cigar as a company, the name. But they do know La Aurora, Tatiana, Nesta Miranda. They know our brands, but not our actual company. So Miami Cigar is actually a distributor for all of these brands. One of the brands being La Aurora and all the brands that go with that. So 107, Preferidos, Guillermo Fernando León, things like that. The relationship started 21 years ago um, when Nestor met Guillermo's father, Fernando León. Um, they hit it off and Guillermo, Fernando decided to allow my mother-in-law and father-in-law to represent their brands in the United States. So then that's how it started. So we've been, we've been a family for 21 years with La Aurora. Um, cool. other, other brands such as like the Tatiana, Nestor Miranda, Casa Miranda, those are brands that we own and distribute. And then other brands like uh, Jason Holly's Viva Republica, that's a brand that he owns that we just do the distribution for him. And, of course, he makes all his cigars in La Aurora as well at our factory in the Dominican. Awesome. Awesome. That's really cool. Um, so how do you determine, uh, of all the different brands that you have, geographically, like, where mm -hmm. do you distribute those? And what are some of the brands that do well in certain geographic areas? Like, what's the formula for that? Well, as a, as a distributor, obviously, you want to push all your brands equally and get them all into the stores. Because that's always the key for us, to have as much shelf space as possible which for the, the retailers obviously is the hardest because they're limited. The real estate there is very limited as to what they have. But for us, you see, and it's trends, it's really not pushed by us. It's pushed by our retailers and our consumers. In certain areas, the larger ring gauges sell better. In other areas, the more fuller body cigars sell better. It just, it depends. And it's, to be honest, it's, a, it's the feedback from the retailers and consumers. And when I say feedback, it's just buying trends. Mm. It's the way they buy is how we tell. It's not really so much. I mean, when it's cold, yeah, we push to shorter formats just because you don't have so much time to smoke outside. But that's just more of a weather thing, not too much of a, a geographical uh, situation. Now, Jason, how do you, how do you balance uh, the online retailers versus the brick and mortars? And, mm -hmm. you know, there are certain things that you do for brick and mortars or, or online retailers that are somewhat different. Right. So it's, that's always, obviously, you talk to any manufacturer, any distributor, that's always, it's a tough situation to be at. Because obviously they're both your, whether it's online retailers or the brick and mortars, both your customers, you want to gear to them and make sure that you give them the best product and the best service possible. So when I started with the company, um, got into it and started learning a little bit more about the ins and outs of the relationships between one and the other. And it's um, the best way, in my opinion, is actually to have two different product lines. Because you can have your brick and mortar products that have to be price protected and everything. That's the backbone of your retailer. That's what they, they count on. When a consumer goes into the store showing them a discount for one of your brands, I understand it. I mean, we get just like all the other manufacturers get calls from our customers telling us, hey, I can't push this brand, it's 15% or it's 20%, it's not right, I'm at a competitive disadvantage for this. 
So what we do is try to separate our portfolio to have brands that are for the catalogs, which they can do discounting and stuff that they please with that, and then brands for the retailers as well. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the best way. At the same time, you want to have your high-end premium or the, the, the more premium high-end brands, you want to have them in the catalogs as well because they are your customer and they support us and everything. Just as long as there's a price protection there and everybody's on the same page, it's, it's normally handled the right way. Mm. Interesting. Will, did you have more questions for Jason? Um, yeah, so, so Jason, as far hey, as... Hey, Will, sorry, could you just move the mic a little closer? Just kind of move your mic up a little bit. You sound a little far away. Yeah. How does that sound? Much better. Thank you. Yep. So, Jason, a big year last year for Miami Cigar, <laughs> 25th anniversary. Um, yes. Why don't you recap the year, because there was a lot of exciting things that happened. Um, and, you know, cause I, I thought it was a great year for you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was, it was a huge year for us, so... Just to commemorate my, my in-laws and the work, the hard work and dedication they put behind getting this company to where it's at, starting in 1989 out of the trunk of their car, to getting it to where it is right now. I've always felt, you know, I, I've been given this position. I've been given this company to run it and take it to the next step. I don't want to be like most people, you know, just giving it and just happy with where it's at. I want to be able to take the company to the next step. They put all the legwork and to get the company from nothing to what it is now, that's honestly, that, that's the hard part. Now I'm able to come in and actually just take us to the next step, ideally with plans and our programs and our different type of releases that we have. So starting in January of 2014, we had our sales meeting and we actually released the unveiling of the new Nesta Miranda collection. So uh, as you guys seen, repackaging, Pepin did a great job reblending the product for us. And it was just a great, it was a great feeling for me personally to actually show this to our reps and actually to show it to Nesta for the first time and just to see their reaction. Normally in sales meetings, you know, it's kind of, it's a little boring at times, like you're just talking and presenting and doing everything. But to have all my reps stand up, standing ovation, they were really excited about the product. And for the first time to feel that from my sales force, like it was a great feeling. And we saw the sales. I mean, we released it in June and it was, it was a great success for us. I mean, all the stores backed us. They bought into everything, the idea, the concept, the one life mentality, everything. And it was, it was a great hit. And that was just the start of the year for us. We actually did our the 25th anniversary humidor which came with a Toro size cigar from both Guillermo and La Aurora and Pepin and uh, my father's cigars. Great hit again. So we hit it two in a row. And then with the Untamed, we released it at the show. Um, for those of you that don't know about the Untamed, it's a full body, ultra aggressive release from Guillermo and La Aurora at uh, the La Aurora Cigar Factory. They're known for their mild to medium, full, full flavorful, very well balanced cigar, tobaccos aged to the gill, two, three, four, five, six years. What we asked them to do was get out of their comfort zone come out with something a little less aged, a little more aggressive, which seems a lot, of, a lot of consumers are looking for that now these days. So we wanted to show them not necessarily that this is the new path of La Aurora, because they've been around since 1903. They've been doing it for a while. But just show them, yeah, we can get a little edgier with our packaging and our blends and stuff Jason, like that. What, Jason, what, what's the components inside of the Untamed? Do you know the, the wrapper, binder, filler components of the Untamed? Ab absolutely. it is different from what yeah, your other offerings. different. The main thing that, that separates it from any other of the cigars from La Aurora are the three different types of Ligero that are in the blend. <coughs> Excuse me. And also the use of the broadleaf Maduro wrapper. In years past, La Aurora's never used the broadleaf. So the first time we actually did use it was with the, the Black Diamond Preferido. Mm -hmm. So that was the first time, about 18 months ago, was the first time they actually started using that. Again, not for any reason. It's just there's a traditional factory. They always use the traditional wrappers, mm -hmm. well-balanced. They weren't looking for anything overly aggressive. And that's why they kind of shied away, but now they went into it. They used it for that product, and we also used it for the Untamed. And, this, was, and the Cien Años Maduro also used the absolutely. Broadleaf wrapper as well. Yeah, yeah. so the Cien Años Maduro, Maduro is the, it's our, our diamond in the rough, or the one that we have in our pocket that hasn't really been released full on yet. So it, it came in that Cien Años pack of 10 boxes. It was one box of the Robusto Cien Años Maduro, just to kind of get that excitement and the hype going with the Broadleaf and to see if they'd accept that blend with the wrapper. So little by little, we get, La Aurora will send me every once in a while 50, 100 boxes, and we'll distribute them, but it's not something that we've released fully yet. Mm -hmm. uh, we're waiting for it. The consumers are waiting for it. If Guillermo's watching, hopefully he'll send us some more boxes. Yeah. <laughs> and I can see the smile on your face because those sell really well for you, don't they? <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's a great feeling to have a product that just comes in and it goes out. Yeah. We were asking for donations for that one, weren't we, at one point? Yes, yes. Yeah, no, Absolutely. That's... We'll, send, we'll send them the video after and hopefully we get some excitement. Yeah, it, it's, it's a special cigar in Stogie Geek's folklore. It really it is. is. It is. Yeah. For sure. Very cool. Yeah. I appreciate it.
So, Jason, what are some of your favorite cigars uh, in the portfolio that you have? Uh, what are some of your favorite cigars to smoke uh, that you're distributing? Absolutely. So, um, from the Laura portfolio, and it's been for a while, we've had the product for quite some time. But in my opinion, from my profile, the 107 has always been my go-to cigar with La Aurora, especially in the Corona size. For some reason, the Corona size, it's, it's a little guy, but it packs the bite. It's, very, it's, it's got the strength and the Nicaraguan spice from the tobacco, and just the blend that keeps that balance and it stays true to a La Aurora cigar. That would be my go-to on the La Aurora side. Obviously, I enjoy Preferido like anybody else mm -hmm. as well, but my go-to everyday stick would be the 107 Corona on the La Aurora portfolio. Um, for, for our portfolio, it's definitely the Nesta Miranda, Connecticut. It's mm. actually a cigar. It's a cigar that I'm smoking now. It's I can enjoy it in the morning, afternoon, and night. Uh, when people think of Connecticut, they think, ah, oh, you know, that's my morning cigar with a cup of coffee, things like that. It's made by Pepin, so it does still have that token Pepin spice. Still full flavorful. It's something that I can enjoy at any time. I don't feel, at least from my palate, it's never overpowered by a glass of rum or some wine or a steak or anything like that. And then um, by the one that I was totally amazed with was out of the Viva Republic line and Jason Holly. The Guerrilla Warfare, the little 4x41. Oh, great cigar. Yeah. Hmm. That's, a, that's a badass little smoke. And again, it's another short format. 4x41, quick smoke, but it's, it's a badass cigar. It's really nice. It's been really cool to work, to work with Jason and see how, how he deals with uh, Manuel and Guillermo and everybody in the factory. Because he isn't a traditional cigar maker, or blender, or anything like that. He is new to the industry, um, but he's had his store for quite some time. And the way that he works... Outside of the box, always thinking about different blends. Let's mix this with this. And the guys in the factory be like, no, you, why would you do that? You can't do it. And then his response always is, why not? Like, let's try it. Let's see, let's see what we can get out of it. And that little guerrilla warfare, I can't wait till it gets into the bigger ring gauges because ultimately that's what we sell more in the U.S. market. But he's trying to work on the blends. So we have the 4x41 and the Corona right now. And it's, it's, a, it's a nice smoke. It's definitely on the fuller side, but it's definitely a, one that I like. I enjoy very regularly. So, Jason, uh, when we did the blending seminar, I got the wonderful opportunity to meet Manuel Inoa, the master blender for La Aurora. Um, now, yes, from, sir. from your position, like, what does that mean to you? And uh, what would you convey to your customers about like, how special it is to have someone like that on the team uh, that's blending cigars uh, for you? From day one, he was the one. So when I told you I went to the factory for three months, he's the one that took me under his wing. And the guy... Besides all the knowledge and everything he has, the tobacco and every note, the, the experience, he started in General Cigar about 30 years ago with La Aurora for about 20 years. He's such a cool guy, charismatic, down to earth. He really cares about like, the people. He's, I don't know what else to say. He's such a great guy. And having him teach me the steps little by little about blends and things like that. And like I said, it's, always, it's a work in progress. But having that guy, I've been trying pretty much from, from day one to get that going, to have him come to the factory. But it's difficult. Like La Aurora and their factory, it's tough to let them get, like, to have Manuel come to the States. So finally, to be able, with the help of Todd and Leon at, at Havana, we were able to get him to the States and actually do the blending seminars. It, for brand recognition and the image of La Aurora, to have this guy traveling in the States is huge. So <laughs> it seems like you recognize that, and that's why you were excited, right? You want to get I, Manuel more into the spotlight. And I totally, I, I, after I met him, I, yeah. now I totally understand that. Yeah, we need him. I mean, it's it's... It's great. Once people get to know him, they're like, oh, so this is the guy behind the cigars and the whole thing. We need somebody in the States talking up and being an ambassador for the brand. Not only just an ambassador, he's the blender, too. Mm -hmm. So he knows everything, the ins and outs of the factory. He's been there forever. He's Guillermo's right-hand man. And he's a cool guy. I mean, he's yeah. not one of the stuck-up guys. He's sold down. I mean, you saw him. Yeah. He hang, hung out in the store for hours. He didn't want to go back home. He was like, this is the best. He, had, like, he didn't want to leave, yeah. and he didn't want anyone else to leave. He didn't let anybody leave. <laughs> yeah. He was like, no, my friend, one more cigar. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That was, that was really super cool. That was super cool. Um, uh, Will, do you have more questions for, for Jason? Yeah, so I want to turn this one back to the Nesta Miranda collection again mm. because this one's kind of been on my mind. So you, 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 re, you rebranded the old Nesta Miranda line, and right. you brought over to Connecticut, right, which was the existing Connecticut. Yes, sir. And then you came up with two new blends, a Habano and a Maduro. Correct. And then you have four sizes that are the same across all of them, right? Yes. So here is my question to you. Knowing right. Nestor, right? Mm hmm I know Nestor loved that Lancero. Absolutely. What, what happened to that Lancero? 
So that was the first, <laughs> the first thing. So like I told you guys, we did this kind of, I did it to commemorate my father-in-law for all, all the work that he'd done. And when he finally saw it, there was two things that he mentioned. The first thing was, where's my signature? Because I took the signature <laughs> off the packaging. So he was always like with a signature, he loved to see a signature on it. I was like, I understood it. I was just like, we're looking for a new, just a new image and a new feel of the brand. And the second thing was his special sizes, whether it be the Dano, which is a seven by 56, the Lancero or the Rookie, which was a profi, uh, Petit Perfecto. Oh, I forgot about but that I, one too, yeah. So I told him, you know, don't worry about it. I have plans for this. Don't worry, it's under control. We'll take care of it. So what we're doing, last year we had six months of the brand in the market, um, already starting to rotate great and everything. Now in March, we're going to release the first release off the One Life Edition. So instead of calling it Limited Edition, Edition Especial, all the different names that everybody uses, we're going with that One Life, the One Life tag for the brand and calling it a One Life Edition, starting with the Dano. So in March, you're going to see, starting to get into the store, it's going to be a thousand boxes of each one of the wrappers. So we'll have a 7x56 in the Connecticut, in the Maduro, and then also in the Habano, just to bring back Nestor's sizes. Then next year in, Mar in 2016 in March, you'll see the Lancero, and then in 2017, you'll see the Short Perfecto. So That's I awesome. I promised him he'd have his sizes back. I just <laughs> wanted, to give, I wanted to give it the spotlight that it deserved. Um, a lot of people don't know the name Dano, like why Dano, what was it? It's, still, it's in memory of his son. So we never really acknowledged it or said too much about it. It was just kind of kept in the family. Um, his son passed away about four or five years ago. So we did release that to, to tribute him. But this year, in the packaging on the inside, you'll see a little write-up about Danny and about the guy that he was. And just to commemorate him, he did leave us. He passed away, unfortunately, when he was 38 years old. So it's something just to commemorate. And it's, it's uh, sentimental to Nestor and Mariana and me and my wife as well. But it's something just to show... Uh, to give it its spotlight, not to just bring it on as a regular or a line extension. We tweaked the blend a little bit, changed the boxes. Everything on it is different just for that moment. And uh, he saw it now on the show in January when we went to the factory. And he was very, he got emotional, but he was very happy to finally have the Dano back in the Nesta Miranda collection. Yeah, I mean, the Dano, I tell you, when you guys did it with the San Andreas in um, 2012, 25. Yeah, yeah, that was, and I'm not the biggest San Andreas guy. I really liked that I came out with that one. Right. It's, um, Nestor and Peping have been tight for a long time, and Peping knows how special, like, that name and that cigar is to Nestor. So he always, I feel like he's involved more always in the blending of that particular cigar, just because he knows, he knows how much it means to Nestor and to the family. So it's always, it gets that little bit extra bit of love uh, from the factory, and you can tell in the end product. Jason, are there, uh, in terms of sizes, mm -hmm. are there sizes from a, a marketing and sales uh, perspective that you push, um, that you kind of feel that is in your market that you want to make? And, you know, do you get pushback or like how do you determine right. which sizes? Well, we've always had, on the, talking about the Miami Cigar Portfolio, we've always had four base sizes. So it was the four and a half by 50, which we call a coffee break or a short Robusto, five and a half 54, which is our Toro, and then six by 60. Those are the three staples. The fourth one in the past was the Bellicoso. With the new releases going forward, we've kind of eliminated the Bellicoso just because, again, consumer and retailer feedback. Yeah, why it, is that? The, the market for Bellicosos or Torpedoes, whatever you right. want to call them, it, it's, it's kind of yeah. it's tapering, right? I, I just think, I did, excuse me, I just don't think they understand that smoke. They really don't. Is it uh, the way you smoke it? Is uh, it where you cut it? Is it, it well, if you, it, it's a great that latter statement that you make. You'll mm -hmm. see someone get a Bellicoso and it'll cut three quarters of it off and it, it just changes the, the whole does. combustion rate of that cigar yeah it changes it dram dramatic i love bellicosos yeah i know really you do. have been a fan in a lot of different lines oh of i absolutely it do. has i think it has to do also with perception from the consumer the price point's always going to be a little bit more than that toro toro more times than not mm -hmm. and they feel just with the tapered tip they're like oh it's pretty much the same cigar because you normally have let's say like a five and three quarter toro and a six inch torpedo it's always like maybe that quarter inch more and they're like ah oh, for that tapered i'm paying extra but it's really the same it's like what you were saying they don't it's, it's education it's education that's on where it. you know because that's my specialty is the the b and m and that's mm -hmm. where they come in so important to educate that consumer about that cigar Right. And, and it takes a one-on-one -on -one relationship, and we do mm. fairly well w with with the Bellicoso. Not as much as we would like, but, you know, uh, from the Corona and the Lancero, our, our store is just mm -hmm. going crazy because, again, it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship, and the Bellicoso is misunderstood greatly. Right. It's, a, it's a phenomenal. Uh, it's really, really good cigar. 
Definitely. So then to go back to go back to your question, we took the bellicoso out and now we've added the Corona Gorda. And there's yeah. no no scientific evidence or anything, no background research. It's the size that I like. <laughs> it's the size that my reps like. So we went ahead and we gave we need that four size. So we did come out with a Corona Gorda. And again, it's back to education. The consumer gets a little educated onto it and they get the different ratio between wrapper, filler, and binder. They tend to like it a little more, but at times it's, it's not for everyone. The guys that like the six by sixties. No problem with that. More power to them. That's what you like. That's the great thing about cigars. You have so many different options. Just enjoy them. Just, Take buy, what you just buy them and enjoy them. Enjoy That's them. That's it. No matter what you, you know, if it's not a Bellicoso or a Lancero, yeah. just buy that Vitola. That's all. You'll if, find buy it. what you enjoy. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and this is this is a selling point where if it's La Roa or, or Debonair or whatever the cigar is, my selling point is I don't like to tell them my particular Vitola, what I enjoy, because I'm afraid that they'll go home. Say if I said the Bellicoso. Mm -hmm. They take that Vitola, they go home, but they don't like it. And what do they do? They look at the line and go, uh oh, buy the line sampler. Buy yeah. the whole thing. No, you're you right. determine what you like. And I think yeah. that's really, really important. So they can make that final decision on that particular brand, what's going to perform best for them. It's, it's interesting, and, and I've done the same thing, and I've changed my opinion over time. Speaking of sizes, Jason, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll try one particular size in a line, and I'm like, ah, that really wasn't for me. And then yeah. Will or Stokey Santa or someone else will try a different size and be like, oh, this is great. And it's only because I, you know, we, I have friends, and we get mm -hmm. together every Thursday, and we do the show, and mm -hmm. we always are talking about different cigars. And because of that community – like, I got to go try other sizes. And that's changed my perception about how I evaluate a, a line. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it was a great point. You kind of got to do the line sample. Oh, I mean, because it's, it's the size no matters. Yeah, size it really matters. It does. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like I said, my, my cliche, I've said it a thousand times on, uh, on the show. If the cigar is, say you get a cigar in a line that's, look at the, 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 the black diamond. Mm -hmm. You come in wherever a particular state that you're in due to taxes. It can go from $16 to 20 something. You tell me where you can get an hour and a half enjoyment for that kind of money mm -hmm. anywhere. You, you, it, it, I think it's a bargain. That's my, yeah. I, I really, really, really do. People, it, I know price does count, but in the grand scheme of things, look at the whole experience of that cigar and what it delivers. Mm -hmm. I think it's a key, key thing that people understand. I really do. That's, Absolutely. that's what it's all about. Will, did you have more questions for Jason? Yeah, I got it. I got one. And Jason, this is kind of this is me being the ultimate cigar nerd here to ask this question, but it, it does really intrigue me. So there's a couple of blends that uh, the Garcias have done for you um, under the Nesta Miranda line. Mm -hmm. One of them is the old Art Deco, and right. the other one was the recent release Chapter Two. And and those two blends have intrigued me for one reason. Okay, Th they're one of the few Garcia cigars that have Dominican in that. Correct. What? what is there anything? Is there anything that happened? Why? Why that happened? Because I, you know I, they do a lot of cigars for people, and you just don't <laughs> see them work with Dominican that much. Right. It started. It started originally with the Nesta Miranda Dominicano about six or seven years ago. Oh, okay, sorry, it was a Dominicano. Yes, I meant the Dominicano, not that the Arteco. That was a big, uh, a big learning experience for us because for the first time, um, at least for me, it was the first time I was with the company, and I, I like to say, I tried to get in the cook's kitchen, basically. So we got in there, we, we brought the wrapper from La Aurora to have Pepin roll and make the cigars. At the end of the day, it, wasn't, it was a totally different profile from the Nesta Miranda Special Selection. And it kind of it scared away some of our consumers and it wasn't a hit as we expected. I spoke to Pepin about the blend. We're like, you know, Pepin, it's not really being accepted like as the other one was. The other one was a hit right off the bat. And it was a simple answer from him. He's like, Jason, I did what you guys asked me to do. And that's the last time. That's the last time I'll ever get in the cook's kitchen. If it's with Guillermo, if it's with Pepin, that's what they do. They make the cigars. We can give them a profile that we're looking for, um, maybe a wrapper that we would like to see used, and then they, have, they send samples back, and we work off of them in that manner. Um, Miami Cigar is a distribution and sales company. We position ourselves with great factories so that we don't have to worry about the blending part. So getting involved with the blending, we're, I'm not a blender. Uh, my father-in-law is not a blender. Uh, we're marketing, positioning, sales, taking care of our sales force and making sure our product is placed in the right spot, getting it in and getting it out of the stores. So that, that was the first and last time, and it's a learning process. Like I said, I've only been with the company for five years, and knowing not to get into that. That's not what we do. We weren't raised master blenders. We aren't master blenders, so let's let the blenders do what they have to do and work on our part. But to get, to get that, then back to the Dominican tobacco, um, 
after that, we've always wanted to get Dominican tobacco because that's our, our, our roots. Our family is La Aurora. We've been with them forever. So we are known, all our, most of our products all do have Dominican tobacco. So we always ask him, send us some blends with a few. He, has, he doesn't have too much Dominican tobacco. Like you said, he works with a lot, mostly in Nicaraguan and a lot of tobacco, like wrapper leaves and stuff that he buys from other countries. So we've asked him to work with the Dominican tobacco, and that's, that's how those two blends did come out. Just uh, on our request to try that, and then we'd smoke the blends, and he was like, this is a good one. Try it. And that one. We made it work. That's good. No, it's, it's a good story, actually. Now, and chapter now Jason, two is, I like that. Mm-hmm. Jason, you, you, you visit a lot of cigar shops here in the U.S., correct? Correct. So I hate to have you pick favorites, right? But mm-hmm. in terms of experience, like, what are some of the cigar shops that you visited that uh, have, like, a really rich experience that kind of stick out in your mind? And, again, I don't want to put you on the spot and have you pick a favorite, but if you can talk right. about some of the, the cigar shops in the U.S., and you know, we have listeners all over the U.S., all over the world, mm-hmm. Um, so it'd be kind of interesting, uh, you know, people are going to be cheering if you mention a shop that they visited, They're like, yeah, I've been there too. It's awesome. So, right. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Cause when you travel, uh, we have 12 reps throughout the U S and when I travel with each one, every area is just so different. Like you have the certain areas that have the full liquor cigar lounges. That's great. I mean, you could stay there till whatever time of night. Mm-hmm. I personally, I'm a big fan of sports so that. That's catering to me. As a consumer, forget about manufacturer, distributor. Jason Wood as a consumer, that's where I'm geared more towards. So the full liquor with the games and everything where you can watch and sit down, open so late, those are the ones that I tend to like a little bit more just because they're geared and catered towards what I like. And you see them. I mean, you see them throughout everywhere. One, for example, Civil Cigar Lounge in D.C. Matt and John have created it's through Drapers. So the W. Curtis Drapers, they have their own cigar bar. Beautiful, amazing. You can sit down there. You can eat food. You have your drinks. They have a cigar sommelier that comes by. Super cool. Great experience. Mm, that's cool. You, you go throughout where I mean, New York, the guys in Cigar Inn, it's a different feel. Like you go there. I, I'm a nightlife guy. I like to be out at night. I like to have a drink, talk, talk to my friends, have a cigar, have a good time. Over there is always, they're open until 2, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. Todd and, Todd and Leon in, uh, at Havana. First time I was ever there was in November when we did the seminars with Manuel. It's an amazing store. It's beautiful. Like just to be there again, same concept. It's got the TVs, it's got the liquor, and it's got the cigars. So that always tends to be kind of like my my staple. What I like um, when I look for. We have Sabor Habana by our by our office in Miami. That's kind of that's just like headquarters. So whenever I want to get out of the office, smoke a cigar, I always end up there. Great people. They're my kind of guys. Miami from beginning to the end. So for good or bad, we stick together. So that's uh, that's a good spot for me. But I mean, they're they're everywhere. The list goes on and on. Town and Country Cigar in, in Euless, Texas. I mean, they're great people. You meet so many great people that it's Maximar in, Cal- in, Cal- in California with Amar. They're, there's millions. It can go on and on and on. And all the other guys, I love you guys too. Yeah, you just can't name them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I got a, a quick question. I mean, five. it's only been five years. It, it, it's a crash mm-hmm. course. What is the most challenging part about cigars you found? What, part, what area have you found the most challenging for you in this, in this five-year spin right. that you've been... It's Miami. 100%. That question to answer for me easily is getting a cigar to stick in the market. It's, it's become, not even become, it's been like this for a while already. Just like how the IT industry was, what's new, what's new, what do you have that's new. And I don't blame the consumer one bit for it because I'm a consumer at times too. I go to the stores and I want to try the new blends from the other companies. But constantly, the consumers are always asking for what's new. So they'll smoke, for example, the Untamed. They love the Untamed, but now they want what's new. Untamed's not new anymore. They want the new thing. So they want what's coming new from this guy or the other guy. That's the most difficult part is to keep the excitement. NMC and Untamed right now, we have the excitement. The Guerrilla Warfare from Vivo, we have the excitement on those three brands. Mm-hmm. Just to keep that rolling because it's the consumer wants something new. They want to try something else. It's to keep that, to keep that in their arsenal. I mean, they're always going to buy two or three cigars, one cigar, maybe five cigars for the week, whatever it may be. Everybody's different. I just want to be one of those guys, one of the bullets in their in their gun. I want to be one. It's hard to keep your cigar in there. Mm, that's the most true. important part. That's yeah. what I so, Jason, I have a very important question. You said you're a sports fan. Yes. So, who do you like in this year's Super Bowl? Oof, this year's Super Bowl. Personally, I, I would like to see the Seahawks win. Ah, this interview is now over. (laughs) (laughs) No, neither team. NFL, to be honest, I'm more of a fan. I I got it. Hey, great team. I don't have a team. I never really liked the Dolphins living in Miami my whole life. Really? 
more more of a college football guy. Yeah. Mm. Uh, my father went to school in Florida State, Tallahassee. Yeah. Mm. I went there, so he had me brainwashed from a young age. So that was always my main football was always college. Um, yeah. Growing don't, up, we Jimmy don't like the dolphin. We don't like the dolphins either. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson was the coach growing up, and he was a cane. So I I, I hate the hurricane. Yeah. So I didn't like the dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it never, it never materialized. I can, I can appreciate a legacy like the Tom Brady, what Tom Brady has, and, and better check what they have going. It's amazing. I mean, you got to, as a fan of the Patriots, mm. you got to love it and ride it as long as it can be because you never know when it's going to come back again. That's, that's a mm. good point. No, that's a great point. <clears throat> I just lost, I just lost my, my legacy in my long run with the Heat. So. Yeah. <laughs> it, it comes around. It does. It comes it around. Does. You had a good run. Yeah. So, uh, Jason, are you ready to play five questions with the Stogie Geeks? Let's do it. Three words to describe yourself. Three words to describe myself. I say um, outgoing, uh, personable, and at times a little bit of a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> if you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? Oof. Not big into, big into weapons or anything like that. Um, I don't know. That's a boring answer. A gun. Poison. <laughs> if you wrote a book about <laughs> poison, <laughs> poi you know, it's interesting. A lot of people answer that poison. Some people say bare hands. It's interesting to hear the, uh, the different answers to that question. But bare gun hands. is perfectly acceptable. There's no right yeah. or wrong answer, right. Jason. Right. Yeah. Uh, if you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? A book about myself? No, the Long and Winding Road. <laughs> In the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? I go first. If you were to choose two celebrities to be your parents, who would they be? Two celebrities to be my parents. Yes, this is a tough one. I do admit it is, it is a tough question. I'm going to stall to give you time All to right. think about it. I, I know. I had the luxury of thinking about it when I had to come up with my answers to this question. And when I found this question on the Internet, I, I thought it was good, but I did appreciate the level oh, it, of, it takes some time yeah, it takes some time to it kind really of does. to think about this one the dad is usually the easier one for, easy yeah, yeah i've been asking this question for about a year now and i have to say yeah. people uh usually answer the dad first and i'm not saying uh -huh. you have to fall into any kind of mold but a lot of times the dad is easier uh if you're interviewing a, a, a male uh, interviewee right the dad is easier the mom is a tough one because your brain starts to gravitate towards like a nurturing. celebrity that's hot. Like the first celebrity that pops in your head that's a female is you think of the ones you're attracted to. But then you're like, well, wait a minute. This has right. to be my mom. And I, 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 <laughs> no, that's weird. And then you, your brain starts doing weird things. And then you settle down and then you think about it. And mm -hmm. I, I appreciate all the answers our guests have given with, over the years. It's, it's interesting. We did a montage uh, when we did our marathon a good one. of everyone's answers to all of these questions, and it was, it was fun. So I've stalled long enough now, right. Jason, for you yeah. to have an answer to this he, he, question. He got one, he could go rule Paul for both. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> Trisexual, whatever. <laughs> so I'm going to go with Pat Riley. Wow. I like that one. And uh, just the guy's always, he's the Don. He's the godfather. He, mm -hmm. he gets things done. He's always been a winner. I, I really respect that guy. And then um, I'm going to do this one for, for my father-in-law, for Nesta Miranda. I would make my mother Sofia Vergara because he loves her. So that he could be move. Smart nice. move. <laughs> <laughs> he can always be around her. Cheers. Uh, I can <laughs> see Nesta watching Modern Family right now. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Well, uh, Jason, thank you very much for coming on the Stoey Geek Show. It was great of you to come on. I'm glad we got a chance to, to sit down uh, and chat for, for this amount of time. It was awesome. Uh, yep. And uh, I'm greatly enjoying my La Aurora Preferidos Corona. I love the spice on this cigar. When I'm I in just the mood lit up for the Ecuador. I, I'm, all, I'm only an inch into it. It's yeah, pretty decent. You like it so yeah, far. Yeah. It's great. It's way early yet, but. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's cool to smoke the Preferidos in a different size. Well, I, I got to tell Jason this. I, uh, I, I went to Florida not too long, uh, last week, and I have a, a, a dear friend of mine. He's an elder statesman, and uh, I brought down a five year old. Uh, uh, Cameroon on the Lancero. A matter of fact, the same one I gave Nestor. Yeah, oh. yeah. I, it's the first oh. time for a half hour we couldn't speak. Yeah, he said it was. That's it, awesome. Oh, that's that's my favorite Lancero. I'm not just saying it. You know how I feel about that. No, it, I, we it's, said that. It, I, it is, I completely it is, agree. For me, it's an oasis cigar. So I just absolutely. It was so funny. He says it, it, it's a phenomenal. So I had to throw that out there just for a little. 
Yep. Very no, cool. no, it's, it's an awesome, yeah. awesome. That's, I'm glad I you brought that up. That. Oh. And thank uh, you, guys, thank you guys for having me on. I had a had a good time. It's excellent. God bless. So, Jason, don't go anywhere. Stick around during the break. Uh, my production crew has asked that you stick around, so don't go anywhere. They probably want you to record a sweeper that will play on, on future shows or something like that. So, don't go anywhere. I do also want to mention that on every – I forget to mention this in the beginning. Um, on every Stogie Geek show, we give away a cigar and a Stogie Geek Smoke Naked T-shirt. Look at that. The video comes right up on the video. There's our, our wonderful model modeling the, the Smoke Wait Naked T-shirt. Wait a minute. Why couldn't I be that model? You can, we'll, we can work that out. We, oh, we can work no, that out during the break. Jesus. Yeah, we'll put we have your there. size in stock. Yeah, you can adorn it. a shirt. We can that's take it. a picture. And that's it. I want my Santa. picture on there. <laughs> <laughs> so every show you are eligible to Age win. Appropriate. If you're listening live. <laughs> You qualify for this contest. Um, so listening live puts you in the best position to win the contest. Exactly. Um, there are other contests which we reserve for all the listeners, no matter how you listen. But the T-shirt and one cigar contest happens on every show, and it's the first available. So if you listen live, it's an incentive for you to listen live because if you're listening during the show, you can be the first one to answer the question, and you get the T-shirt and the cigar. Now, there is a three-month window where you're not so once you win, you can't win again for another three months. I mean, I don't know how many smoke naked T-shirts you want, but well, I tell you, what, I was in Vegas. That was I'm telling the hack you, naked because well, we had hack naked. Now we've got smoke naked. Yeah, right. It's it's amazing. Yeah. So stay tuned. At the end of the show, we will read a question, and you will then enter a contest where you'll be eligible to win a smoke naked T-shirt and um, uh, a cigar. I don't know what the cigar is going to be. Well, you'll find out at the end what the cigar will be. But stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're going to take a short break, come back, and do our Stogies of the Week. So thanks, everyone. Stay tuned.